Be sure to pre-order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion as he takes you through the ins and outs of the most explosive offense and most exciting offense in college football. You can find it on our website at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Welcome to Football Game Plan, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is your producer today. It's the summertime, and preseason is just around the corner in the NFL, and we'll get you ready for the upcoming 2019 NFL season as we preview the Chicago Bears. Now, as we kick off the season preview, let us take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. The Chicago Bears took the NFL by surprise in 2018 by making the playoffs. New head coach Matt Nagy ran an innovative offense for quarterback Mitch Trubisky with lots of short throws and misdirection on the ground in the air. While innovative, the offenses didn't exactly produce much as the Bears ranked 21st in total offense last season. Look for Nagy and Trubisky to produce a more potent offense in 2019. Khalil Mack is a three-time first-team All-Pro at defensive end and he sure played like one in 2018. He had 12 and a half sacks, six forced fumbles, and picked up two fumbles in his first year as a Bear. Well established as the face of the defense, Mack is sure to see more double and triple teams in 2019. How he goes about defeating those blocks next season will be something to watch, as he was able to amass such impressive stats in only 14 games in Chicago. The Bears traded away Jordan Howard this offseason, and their run game is expected to suffer as a result. In his three years in Chicago, he ran for 3,370 yards and 24 touchdowns in 44 games played. To replace all that ground game, the Bears selected running back David Montgomery from Iowa State in the third round of the draft. Expect big things out of Montgomery as he ran for over 2,400 yards and 24 touchdowns in his sophomore and junior seasons as a Cyclone. Is Roquan Smith the next great Bears linebacker? Being an inside linebacker as a Chicago Bear carries weight with the legacy of Hall of Famer Dick Buckus' shadow looming. Smith was drafted in the first round in 2018 and he didn't disappoint. He tackled 121 ball carriers and had five sacks and an interception and five passes defense as a rookie. I'm expecting bigger things from him in 2019. It's time to put this team under the microscope and go position by position to see where they stand as we head into the 2019 season. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball at the quarterback position. Mitchell Trubisky made significant strides last season, tossing 24 touchdowns to 12 interception. That's very good progress considering where he was as a rookie. However, watching the Bears last season on offense, you got the feeling that they were still being held back by number 10. So entering year three, it's up to both Trubisky and head coach Matt Nagy to get off to a great start taking an even bigger step forward this season because the talent around him is definitely there. And if Trubisky is able to elevate his game, this Bears offense could be top 10. Chicago wanted to get a bit more explosive in the backfield, so they traded Jordan Howard to the Philadelphia Eagles and brought in both Mike Davis via free agency and drafted David Montgomery in the third round out of Iowa State. Both Davis and Montgomery share similar traits in my opinion, and they'll take over that pace setter role within his offense, which allows the Bears' best back on the roster to Rick Cohen to continue to serve within his underutilized role on this squad. All jokes aside, Cohen is a type of game breaker that should never leave the field in my opinion. Look for both Ryan Nall and rookie Kareth White out of Florida Atlantic to make a case for a roster spot this summer. White may even be the starting kickoff returner or punt returner on special teams. Quietly, Chicago has built an excellent receiving core. What I like about Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, and Anthony Miller is that they are all dynamic options that can break the game open. The latter two are very versatile as well. In free agency, they brought in another versatile dynamic player in Cordero Patterson out of, uh, from New England, I'm sorry, who instantly makes them a better special teams return unit as well. Two rookies in Raleigh Ridley out of Georgia and Emmanuel Hall out of Missouri should help round out the receiving core. And Chicago has to figure out a way to get second year player Javon Wims more involved in a red zone passing game. There's not a 50-50 ball that he can't win. He actually turns that into 95-5. He was a star during the preseason. Now the tight end position is stable as well with Trey Burke leading the way again. Versatility is the name of the game within his overall core. The third year player Adam Shaheen has to stay healthy in order to be a factor. If he can't, 
Keep an eye on two undrafted rookie free agents and Dax Raymond out of Utah State and Jesper Horstead out of Princeton. Raymond is a solid receiving threat that's also a very good inline blocker, while Horstead was a fantastic receiver at Princeton and will assume more of a flex tight end role in the NFL. His baseball background allows him to be excellent at tracking the ball in the air and getting his body in great position to make the catch. Solid is how I would aptly describe the Bears offensive line. The strength is on the interior as James Daniels, Cody Whitehair, and Kyle Long are very good players. Long has to stay healthy in order for this line to reach its full potential. Now they get good steady play at both tackle spots as well with Charles Leno Jr. and Bobby Massey. It'll be interesting to see the continued development in reserve tackle Rashad Coward's game as he successfully made the switch from defensive line to offensive line. Now there is good depth here as well with Ted Lawson coming in via free agency from the Dolphins, Cornelius Lucas, and TJ Clemmings. Now here's how I graded the Chicago Bears offensive units. I love what the Bears bring to the table along the defensive line. They are sound and disruptive on both ends of defense. They got great play from Bilal Nichols last season, in addition to the level of consistency that they always get from Akeem Hicks and Eddie Goldman and what they bring to the table. The guys that I foresee having breakout years this season are Abdullah Anderson and Roy Robertson Harris. Anderson was on a practice squad last year and has the versatility to play any technique up front, and Robertson Harris proved to be a pass rushing threat last season. Keep an eye on both Chuck Harris and Jonathan Harris as rookies during camp, as those are guys that could surprise. What a difference Khalil Mack made last season for the Bears. He absolutely transformed his defense, especially at the second level, into legit threats. Mack finished the season with 12 and a half sacks last year and displayed the knack for making a big play at the most critical of times. Joining him in making big plays were both inside linebackers Roquan Smith and Danny Trevathan. Smith led the team in tackles as a rookie and looked exactly how he did at Georgia, while Trevathan is a true enforcer at the position that has that dog mentality that you want from your inside backers. Leonard Floyd has become a steady player, maybe not the game breaker that he was projected to be coming out of Georgia, but steady nonetheless. I thought bringing back Aaron Lynch was a big time signing. I leaned a bit to more toward him being the perfect pass rushing bookend to Floyd, I'm sorry, to uh, Khalil Mack, but at worst, he gives the Bears good depth, as so does Nick Kwiatkowski, Kylie Fitz, and Isaiah Irving. Chicago is also really strong on the back end, filling the secondary with smart, instinctive players who make plays on the ball. And I think both cornerback Kyle Fuller and safety Eddie Jackson work extremely well together. Both players are very in tune to what an offense is trying to do to them, and they're able to get themselves in position to make a play. Now, gone is Adrian Amos, who is excellent, but in comes Ha Ha Clinton Dix from the Washington Redskins, and the hope is that he can provide that same level of play that they got from Amos. In my opinion, Ha Ha is a solid player, just has to find that level of consistency from game to game. You have to be impressed with the development of Prince of Mukamara's game at corner. He has quietly developed in one of the more solid corners in the league. Buster Screen figures to take over the nickel duties this year, and I think the Bears have some young Cubs who could find their way on the field and make an impact, like Kevin Tolliver, Michael Joseph, both are second-year players within the organization, and they also have three impressive rookies in Steven Denmark out of Eldosa State, Clifton Duck out of Appalachian State, and Joshua Simmons out of Limestone College, who all have great ball skills and good instincts, just making this unit even stronger. Now, here is how I graded the Chicago Bears' defensive units. The Chicago Bears have a lot of good personnel at their disposal this year. One in particular, Tariq Cohen, you know how much I like his game and think he's one of the better backs in the NFL. And I think they have the opportunity to create an explosive running game using a little misdirection with Cohen and also David Montgomery, their rookie out of Iowa State in the backfield at the same time. What we're talking about inside the red zone, let's say 25 yard line going in. Here's an opportunity to hit a big play on the interior of a defense utilizing two tight ends, two backs, and two wide receivers. And I like Adam Shaheen. I hope, hopefully he takes another step this year or bigger step this year and becoming what they expected him to be coming out of Ashland. And you also look at Trey Burton with David Montgomery and uh, Tariq Cohen, your two wide receivers out there as well. What we're going to try to do is utilize an influence motion, misdirection, so to speak, and get Cohen going inside and we're trapping this five technique on the outside. So how are we gonna get this thing blocked up? We're gonna have Burton work up and block that backer. Receiver is gonna work up and try to get this safety blocked. Work to the corner, but obviously work toward the safety and try to get that guy blocked. We're gonna leave him unblocked. We're gonna have him work up to the backer. Block down, work up to the backer here. 
boom, kicking him out right there. And that's the that's the block that's gonna spring this thing right down the middle. And we're gonna have him try to get this tackle block, work up to the safety. Here's where the motion can influence this guy to fly up the field as if he's uh, seeing something going in the back there, getting these guys in better position to get blocked. Because once the snap happens and Mr. Trubisky reverses out, flow, flow, flow. Getting those guys in better position to get blocked. They see David Montgomery going around. Tariq Cohen takes that jab step. He pivots back. Going right there, getting the handoff here. And he's going to be off to the races. Once you get this guy blocked, whether he gets kicked out far, if he gets a good hook here, Cohen can go that way. If he gets blocked straight on and this guy doesn't move and comes downhill and this tackle is able to block him as, a, as if he's a base block, Cohen can take it right down the middle. But this is how Chicago, in my opinion, can utilize their personnel and get a little bit more creative and explosive in the backfield in their running game this upcoming season. Chicago secondary played really well last year, in my opinion, and one of the reasons why was they got an all-pro season out of Kyle Fuller, the cornerback, and also Eddie Jackson, the free safety, making plays happen on the back end. When you have those two guys, in my opinion, on the same side, it makes life a lot difficult for the receiver and for the quarterback. And I'm not going to draw anything up here. just want to explain why that works and why that tends to happen when you have two legit stars on one side of the ball. And what happens, let's say they, they come out in twins with one and two here on the left side. Kyle Fuller is a guy that can play press, he can play off coverage, and he can also play zone really well. So let's say he's showing a, a press look here, and as soon as the ball snaps, he takes a step back, shuffling, and, and really just playing outside technique, trying to get this guy inside. And he's still in good position because what he's doing here, he's playing outside position, working or funneling the receiver toward Eddie Jackson here, the free safety, but also keeping an eye on, on number two right there and the quarterback because if they run some sort of, he's coming in and he's going out, he's still in great position to plant and drive on the football. We've seen him make this play numerous times. Let's say they want to run some situation where they're going to have the slot fade. He's coming down. You still have a situation where he's in great position to switch off. He can drive on that route. He can come down here. But what I like about it is the fact that you have both guys in tune with the quarterback and receiver. They do a great job of playing with their eyes on both players, which allows them the opportunity to make plays on the ball, which is why I think Chicago's secondary should be good once again in 2019. Got the Chicago Bears. Mitch Trubisky, I think he had some good games last year. I also think that it's well documented. I put it everywhere. I believe the Chicago Bears are going to miss the playoffs. In fact, I believe the Chicago Bears are going to be this year's Jacksonville Jaguars. Probably go 8-8. Eight eight. they got a tough schedule. I don't think they're winning any of their first place games against the Saints. The Rams or Cowboys. I don't think they're winning any of those games. I think they go 3-3, three 4-2 three, at best in their division. That's a losing record out of those games. 4-5 or 3-6. and, five, four, three and six. I think they're slated for 8-8, eight eight, not this meteoric Super Bowl run that some people think. So Mr. Trubisky, I think, will have an average season. He's a guy that I'll probably stay away from because he'll probably be drafted in that 7th to 8th round because of what he did last year. And that's just not what you want to do. David Montgomery and Tariq Cohn. I actually think they both can have good seasons. I think David Montgomery will probably go in that mid-6th to 7th round range. He'll probably be, because of the way they seem like they want to function, because of where he was drafted, they want to kind of slide him into that Jordan Howard role. I personally would take Tariq Cohn because I think he can be utilized in more ways. And I think that he's a good enough running back where if they actually treat him like the running back he is, he can get goal line work and he can score touchdowns. He won't get hurt, folks. Receiving core. I would stay away from the receiving core because it's too much of a hodgepodge. Allen Robinson should be a number one somewhere, but I feel like he's not a number one in Chicago. Scheme schemed out of being the number one. You can get him in the seventh round, you take him there, but I think he's gonna go in the fourth or fifth round range. Uh, Anthony Miller, talent be damned. Uh, he's got it, but I don't think that they're gonna give him the opportunity to be the guy, because they still have a guy like Taylor Gabriel on the, on the roster. And then Trey Burton, what do you do with them? Again, this can actually end up being something that works really well for people, because I think he'll be the forgotten person. I think he can slip into that double digit round area, and that's where you utilize a guy like Trey Bird because we don't know from a consistency standpoint he's gonna get the, the ball. 
And the Chicago defense. The Chicago defense will be viewed like the Jacksonville Jaguar defense was last year. I think that they're going to be a good football team because anyone with Khalil Mack, any defense with Khalil Mack is going to be good. I do not think they'll be this transcendent defense because losing Big Fangio was more massive than people want to say. And I'm going to go on record and say, since they're playing so many good offenses, they're not putting up these video game numbers like they did last year. And again, when you're losing games, guys on defense especially get upset if the offense is producing. I think that's a possibility this year. Troy Anthony here bringing you the best bets for the Chicago Bears. The Bears easily took their division last year with a record of 12 and 4. If Trubisky can keep improving and Matt keeps producing for that defense, I think they win the division again this season. So I'm taking them at plus 160. I'm going to double down on that and take them at minus 115 to make the playoffs. Now the Bears were one of the best teams in the league last year and it would have been interesting to see what noise they can make if they had a kicker. They have a shot to go to the Super Bowl this year and you can get them to win the NFC Championship at plus 700. The three contenders to go to the Super Bowl out of the NFC for me are the Bears, the Rams, and the Saints. Plus 700 is a big number. That's all for now. I'm Troy Anthony. Follow me on Twitter, at Football Fandom, replacing the O's with the zeros. I'm David Hassagan, and this is Huddle Up with Hassagan. We're going to be firing off some quick takes about the Chicago Bears. Who are the breakout candidates for this season, Emery? I like Mr. Trubisky this year to have a breakout season. Last year he was kind of inconsistent. It really was the reason why. It wasn't the reason why they were winning games. It was because of their defense, because of their running game. Um, I think this year he takes the next step. The reason why I like him as a breakout candidate, I think when you look at the, the way he finished that Eagles playoff game, mm. he saved his best for that last drive. Yep. And that's when you saw kind of the light come on for him. Because he, he played awful throughout the course of that game. Yeah. Last drive, he stepped up, hit some big time throws, got them in position to win that game. So I think he's going to carry that over this season. Defensively, I think Kevin Tolliver, who they had last year as an undrafted free agent out of LSU, big physical corner, can play safety as well. He's now going to be pushed up the depth chart, and I think he has a great opportunity because of what he did last year, getting some seasoning. He has a chance to be a breakout candidate this year for the Bears defense. Who do you think the impact rookies are going to be on both sides of the ball for the Bears? I think when you look at their third round pick, David Montgomery, mm. uh, he's going to fill the Jordan Howard role. Personally, I would just give the ball to Rick Cohen, but they obviously want to run in tandem. I know they brought in Mike Davis free agent, via free agency, but they're going to give the ball to their rookie uh, to, for him for him to fill that role that Jordan Howard left. And defensively, I like an undrafted free agent out of Appalachian State and Clifton Duck. Mm. When you go back to his freshman year, freshman All-American ball skills, interceptions for days and bringing him back to the house. Also a fantastic punt returner. People start to shy away from him each and every subsequent year, uh, but he still has the ball skills. And they, I think he has a good opportunity to make an impact on, a, on special teams, but also as a slot corner with this Bears team. Let's talk about X factors for Chicago. Who do you think is going to have the big impact this season? Well, one, it has to be David Montgomery. We talked about him because again, he's going to fill that role Jordan Howard vacated when he left and Ha Ha Clinton Dix. I thought he did well last year. Now you look at him coming back year two, and learning a new scheme. You know, you, know, right. you got you lose Vic Fangio, who's now the head coach with the Denver Broncos. Right. You have Chuck Pagano, very good defensive mind. But I want to see him have an encore season, uh, just like he did last year. Who do you think the training camp surprises were for Chicago this season? Going to the FCS level, undrafted rookie free agent Princeton wide receiver Jesper Horsett was probably going to be a tight end for the Bears, which means right. he's going to play that flex tight end position. He's going to be what they wanted to get out of Adam Shaheen, out of Ash, Ashland, uh, that they drafted two years ago. So I think when you look at Horsehead and his ability to work the short intermediate area of the field, even deep down the field, he tracks the ball well with that baseball background, great hands. I like him in this offense. I think he has a great opportunity to make, make an impact. I would also look at another undrafted free agent, Joshua Simmons out of Limestone. Very good corner, can play safety, can play corner. I had him down to the Tropical Bowl, did the broadcast down there. He was the best corner that week. He played so well, he got the call up to the NFL PA game and went out there to California and did well. So I like him in this defense. They love these taller press corners that have ball skills. 
here's a great opportunity. What do you like and not like about the Chicago Bears this season? I like their defense, obviously. I love to Rick Cohen, what he brings to the table. I like the fact that they have good receiving options. Their yeah. offensive line is quietly one of the better lines that no one talks about in the NFC. So they have a lot going for them. They have a young quarterback that's improving. What I don't like, special teams. I know they made a big deal about it, but they got to find a kicker. They got to find ways to close out games if it comes down to a kicking game. That's what kept them out of the next round in the playoffs. They couldn't hit the field goal. And so if they could find a kicker, they can go far. I also worry about Mr. Trubisky not taking the next step. If he can't do that, then everything is going to be like we saw for a lot of what we saw last year on offense. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here, and joining me now is football game plan analyst Troy Anthony for this Four Downs with the czar segment, continuing our preview of the Chicago Bears as we take a look at the road to the Super Bowl for the Bears. And we'll start with number one, uh, their franchise quarterback, Mr. Trubisky. I say that in jest because this is a guy that in a draft with Pat Mahomes and Deshaun Watson and went second overall. So that ties into my point that I'm trying to make here. I said all that to say this, he needs to become an asset. If he can play the entire season like he played that last drive against Philadelphia, I thought that was his best quarterbacking of the season. He saved it for the best time because they had that game won until their defense kind of gave up and, you know, kind of got, you know, allowed them to, you know, get beat by the Eagles. But I think Trubisky has to become an asset. Yes, the special teams did the kicking game and all that stuff like that uh, played a big role in them losing that, that ball game against Philadelphia, but I felt like Trubisky played like trash the first three and a half quarters and turned it on in the end. And if he can carry that over to this year and play a full 16 games, this team has more than enough talent to get to the big game. They have a lot of talent, but we have to see what they do now that they don't have Howard. Because I don't believe that Tariq Cohen is a... Desmond down... Howard? Jordan Howard. They lost Jordan Howard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you talking like they lost Desmond Howard. <laughs> uh, you know, he's still accounted for... Ron Howard. He's still accounted for 935 rushing yards. Fair enough. Now, Tariq Cohen is not a three-down back. I don't believe you can consistently take him through the tackles. He's, he's small. He's quick. He hits hard. But he's going to get hurt if you give him the rock the whole season for three downs. We'll see how Montgomery comes in and does... But I also want to see what they do out of the receivers. Allen Robinson, what can he do if he puts together a full 16-game season? He played 14 games last year and had 754 yards. But who was their second receiver? They need another receiver to come out. And I want Trey Burton to develop for Trubisky. If Trey Burton can develop for Trubisky, Trubisky will have better numbers. Here's the thing. First of all, there will be no Tariq Cohen slander on this on this show. When you talk about Cohen, you talk about a guy as a game breaker. I like Cohen. I do. I just don't think that he can consistently be a three down back for a season without getting injured. You can't hit what you can't catch. You can't hurt what you can't touch. So it's going to take a lot to hurt Tariq Cohen. Speaking of that, here's the thing. When you look at the defense, everybody loves the defense. Everybody loves the Chicago Bears team. And a lot of people are picking them to, to go to the Super Bowl or, or be close. But what they're forgetting is that what we're going to see defensively is going to be a little bit different because they have a new defensive coordinator in Chuck Pagano. He's walking to a situation where you don't want to touch anything. It's like taking over uh, McDonald's, right? And then you look at someone coming in and changing the recipe on the fries. <laughs> the fries are perfect right where they were. Don't mess with what's going on here in Chicago. Now, Pagano is a great defensive mind. So anything he may change it may actually elevate them to being all-time great. They were good last year, very good. But I think he has to continue to push his defense forward. And it's, it's hard to come in and really humble yourself and say, man, I don't really want to mess this up. They did a lot of great things last year under Vic Fangio. Now I'm coming in. I want to add my, my, my spin on it. But you don't want to mess up the, the chemistry. So I'll be interested to see what they do. But if he can continue to push his defense forward and keep them in the top five, this team is definitely going to go far. With, for them to go far, they have to do what they did last season, and that's dominate in their division. Last season in their division, they went 5-1, and one, and that one loss came week one to the Packers. Rodgers got hurt, came back in the game, and led the comeback. But if they can dominate their division again this season, I'm going to say that they're going to have a high seed in the NFC, and that's going to spring them into the bye and on into the Super Bowl if they can kick some field goals. I was about to say, you know, <laughs> Bears fans watching this video, it's like, okay, all that sounds great, but if we can't find a kicker, it won't happen. But all that being aside, if that offense can play from uh, a, an extended lead, yeah. if they can start blowing people out, 
the kicker won't matter anyway. So hopefully the Bears kicking game can solve itself and that offense can really help catch themselves up to where the defense is right now for the Bears. I have the Bears finishing first in the NFC North. I know the tractors will point to the easy schedule per se last year, but it's the NFL and there's no game that's considered pretty easy. You still have to go out there, compete, and actually win the contest. What you can take away from that season, though, is that this team, in their winning last year, found confidence, and that's what you need to help you break through. Considering that this team is well-stocked with talent on both sides of the ball, now with the taste of playoff football and the confidence to go along with it, I think the Bears would avoid the success hangover and make a return trip to the postseason. So that's it for this season preview. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes, where you can find our NFL All 32 podcast, our fantasy football starting lineup, as well as our scout team podcast and leave us a five-star rating. Also subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Finally, every Thursday and Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, be sure to check out the Football Game Plan show on the Game Plus Network. Check with your cable provider for channel listings.